How many minutes? <laughs> Conversations with the CEO, take one. Hello, uh, this time we are going to talk about cardiovascular medicine cardiovascular disease, and the Medical City Cardiovascular Institute. I would uh, tell you that uh, when Medical City was in the old site, the uh, Cardiovascular Institute actually started as a, just a heart station where we only had an ECG and a treadmill machine. And since that time, it has gone through uh, so many changes and expansion with the addition of more and more uh, cardiovascular experts. That uh, about the time that uh, before the turn of the century, uh, in the late 1990s, or perhaps uh, 2000, no? um, we moved up, moved up to, to the echo, which was of the lower kind, to a higher, uh, uh, to the echo. And then as soon as we prepared for the uh, cardiovascular fellowship program to be accredited, we knew that cardiovascular medicine at that point required knowledge and expertise in uh, interventional cardiology and uh, cardiovascular catheterization. I can say that uh, while I have always been uh, uh, associated with the medical city ever since. When we uh, invested on our first cardiac cath lab, I think we bought it only for one person. <laughs> we we did uh, invite other people, but we had one person in mind, and this was uh, because uh, the late Dr. Simon Sawit was very close to him. He just came back from the United States where he studied his cardiology medicine and his uh, interventional cardiology in the State University of New York. Okay, and he came back here, young and uh, um, uh, and aggressive, and he was the first guy to uh, take charge of our cardiac cath lab. That was around twenty hundred. First and first and only. First and only until now, twenty years already. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, but uh, in twenty o four, we moved to this new site, to the present site, and everybody, the public. Uh, you know, marveled at the uh, the size and the beauty of the medical city. And it is just as well because at that point, cardiovascular diseases, chronic lifestyle diseases, predominated in the demographic profile of uh, disease in the Philippines and in the world, in fact. We moved the cardiac cath lab here and uh, we started really our cardiovascular training program. In 2007, we uh, inaugurated the cardiovascular center. I was at the moment, at that time, uh, the, uh, the director, you know, just because, uh, because of history, putting together not only uh, cardiovascular medicine in adults, but also cardiovascular surgery, where we got Dr. Adrian uh, Manapat to head it. And that required us to remove uh, cardiovascular uh, surgery from uh, general surgery. And then we also uh, started getting the pediatric cardiology to become part of the center. 2007, uh, we inaugurated and we were so proud and we started adding more and more staff. It was a community building that we had and we are so proud up to now that it has, I think, become a model in terms of community building in uh, one specific expertise and specialty, which is medicine. And it was around that time, 2015, that we knew that we already had to move up to uh, become the Cardiovascular Institute because we already had everything. And we had definitely the expertise, we had the equipment, we had the organizational structure, we had the uh, training program, and we had the total uh, design uh, as far as uh, cardiovascular medicine is concerned, pediatrics, uh, uh, research, uh, surgery, and of course, adult, all the way to cardiac rehabilitation. 
and all the way to other subspecialization. And no other person could have led it better than our present uh, director uh, of the Cardiovascular Institute, Dr. Gary Martinez. So Gary, uh, I am first and foremost, I'm very proud that you uh, have accepted uh, actually uh, in 2015, is it? Well, uh, 2013. formally to 2015, but uh, actually around 2012. Yeah, 2012, yes. yes. You refused to, uh, you said, uh, not yet, not yet. And I was already trying to tell you to prepare. Right, right. Yes. I was the head of the section of cardiology yes, then, yes, and yeah. you were the uh, CVI, uh, the, uh, at that time, the cardiovascular center director. Yes. And uh, you said, you know, take take it. Uh, and I said, I had unfinished work in the section, and yes, eventually, uh -huh. uh, it came to be around 2015. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then formally as an institute uh, two years ago. But uh, basically, yes. Yes. it was just a name change and we already were functioning. But we, we, uh, we were given the cardiovascular floor, right? Right, uh, right. That's yes. right. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, well, gee, that was a very nice summary. Uh, you did fail to mention that, you know, what's I think very significant about our institute now is that over the about 35 years, of the existence of this section first, and then the, mm. the center, and then the institute, there's only been really three leaders, right? Mm. Yeah, Dr. Simon Sawit, mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Simon Sawit, you mentioned, and uh -huh. then uh, once we started moving into the uh, uh, big time in big league, of, uh, big leagues, yes, the big uh, league, yes. Uh, from the minor leagues, it was you mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. over the reins, mm -hmm. and then you finally passed it on to me, uh, when uh, uh, basically you had to, uh, take more um, responsibility administration, within the, yes. within mm -hmm. the administration. Mm -hmm. So three leaders, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it provides a sense of stability, I yes. think. Uh -huh. A certain amount of, I think, uh, a leadership that sort of uh, people can, can uh, look up to in terms of uh, uh, continuity and, and also uh, uh, in terms of um, the people that we trained and the people that trained after us looked, uh, looked up to us in a sense. Uh, uh, and we always had that uh, common common uh, idea of uh, the practice of medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Ethics and, and good I mean, medicine above all, yes, you know, uh, more than, for example, super subspecialization. That's right. We yes, always uh, try to imbibe, the, imbibe these things among our uh, trainees. But yes, so three, uh, three leaders over the years, uh, different styles, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, providing a sense of continuity to the organization. And I think we have uh, created enough memories, more than enough memories. Well, I, I think so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> probably I, we have to move on to a fourth yeah. leader, uh -huh. I think. But yeah, you, you summarized it very well. Uh, when, when you took on the reins, uh, we, we started to uh, build uh, this beyond a section of cardiology mm -hmm. into a, a center where we had the full uh, offerings of mm -hmm. uh, uh, interventional cardiology and uh, open heart surgery and the training program yes, uh -huh. that was going to build our team That's in a right. sense. Mm -hmm. When that was also uh, two or three years before the big move to yes. the institution, mm -hmm. uh, to, to the building and, and the and inauguration of the uh, center. Uh, when I took over, uh, my drive was to to create a subspecialties, mm -hmm. you know, to strengthen the subspecialties, uh, build expertise in 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 the different subspecialties where we could uh, be able to offer uh, more a bit of the cutting edge of mm -hmm. cardiology. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I know uh, I remember I distinctly remember in your uh, MBA paper mm -hmm. you you talked about. Uh, national leadership mm. in, in cardiology uh, in the decade of uh, 2010 to 2020. I yeah. mean, at least mm -hmm. moving towards that yes. direction. Yes, yes. So we had to build that, uh, you know, that expertise and some specialties. And uh, so we reached out to uh, certain uh, recognized uh, uh, experts in cardiology in, in nationally. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, for uh, Vascular medicine, we reached out to Dr. Abola. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for advanced echocardiography, we went, reached out to Dr. Edwin Tukai. Edwin so Tukai, so yes. we, we reached out to people that we knew, kind of uh, shared our vision yes, yes. and would mm -hmm. contribute. But we also uh, looked towards uh, training our own, yeah. you know, sending them uh, within our institution and also uh, abroad. abroad. Yes. 
so mm-hmm. that they could bring ideas. So because you know that inbreeding is not so That's good. Correct. You know? That's correct. That's correct. I, I know yes, you have yes. several examples mm-hmm. for that. So we, we needed to get fresh ideas. Also, that tends to build silos, little silos mm-hmm. within you know advanced echo, interventional cardiology, rehab. <laughs> yeah. So so in a sense, uh, it goes against you know. What you but it's typical of medicine. Yeah. Right, right. And then, you know, people tend to uh, move away and say, you know, we're better, you know, we're better and rec- recruit uh, people to their team. But but you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned teamwork. You know, yes. we were we we're not trying to build an organization of different sort of specialties. We we emphasized uh, building a team, mm. building a team where people would work together uh, rather than with each other. That's right. mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you, when the analogy is, of course, a sports team where you mm. you have us, unfortunately, the seniors already, yeah, the you seniors. know, and the, mm-hmm. the veterans, and then the 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 actual uh, active group that's yeah. mm-hmm. that's bringing in the patients, mm-hmm. and then the our farm, <laughs> the, and then the farm team, the room, yes, you yes, know, yes. It, yeah. uh-huh. we identify these people that are mostly from our training, yes. but also uh-huh. we invite people from outside who could contribute, and and so. So we've grown. No? We've, yes. We have about 80 to 900 uh, uh, cardiologists yeah. within our fold. Uh, certainly, we we actively pick them. We 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 uh, train them, and and uh, we we have our yearly team building yes. exercises. Thanks to Dr. Ramboyo. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, it was very instrumental in, in you yeah. know moving Getting towards that. Together. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so so the trainees saw our interaction, you yeah. know, so how we, we had fun with each other, how we we interacted and, and they could see, you know, this is this is family. Yeah, this is family, this, this is a team, family. you know, yeah. this is not just an organization mm-hmm. where I could mm-hmm. just uh, uh, put up my practice up. I could just belong to them, yeah. and and of course we had these satellite clinics where they mm. could actually, without we cleaning. have become a, right a, an employment agency as well because <laughs> at the moment that they graduate, they they already have clinics. They could practicing. join without yes. minim, with minimal capital That's outlay great. That's and, great. Uh, yeah. and 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 start seeing patients. Uh, just. You know, bring bring their stethoscope and sit down, and start yeah, seeing patients, right. yes. and and also get involved in our institution. So uh, it's been a journey uh, of uh, you know, um, yeah, opposite. We, uh, we, we we have enough years to look back to and say, hey, we've done a good job, right? And I, the I challenge so. now is moving forward. Yeah. But yeah, moving forward, uh, you know, it, it, of course, COVID has been a challenge, yeah. but uh, we continue to build on these subspecialties. We look more towards uh, uh, being a little bit on the cutting edge yeah. because uh, mm-hmm. we, we we see ourselves as a referral institution. That's correct. Yes. Uh, for both our, our own patients uh, here in the country and all foreign mm-hmm. countries. So so we, we build expertise there. So. Uh, you know, as you know, cardiology is one of the least stagnant. Uh, mm. uh, it's always on the go, right? Always on the go. Yes. Always, uh, you know, new studies, new, new, new interventions. So, mm. it's a never-ending thing. So sometimes uh, we start to get left out as yeah. as uh, mm. senior people, yeah. and, and and one sees the well, importance. We, we, some senior people really decide to step aside a bit. Right. Know, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, so we, we should build our, uh, you know, we should uh, develop our own leaders within our institute. And, and I think we're doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I see many candidates within mm-hmm. our own organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Gary, you know, uh, the entire gamut, uh, we uh, start, for instance, with the preventive cardiology aspect. And I think most of us are, are totally, um, totally um, abreast with all the things about uh, preventive cardiology in terms of the risk factors and all these things. But we have moved on to uh, not only the interventional aspect, but the acute myocardial infarction certification program uh, of the JCI. We're the only one in the Philippines, and maybe you can uh, talk more about that. Yeah, you know, I, back in 2011, 2012, uh, we were getting a little bit uh, more active in the interventional cardiology mm-hmm. field. We, we started doing uh, radial access uh, mm-hmm. uh, through the radial artery uh, intervention, which was really a big yeah. uh, milestone because uh, this uh, made possible patients getting up and, 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 and uh, doing um, things and eating soon after their and, procedure. And, and living the same day. Yes, going yes. home the same day yes. after their procedure. Yeah, that's uh, right. and, and so uh, uh, at that time, uh, 
Eugene, uh, uh, you were the uh, uh, director at that time of the cardiovascular center, uh, gave us a challenge. You know, mm -hmm. myself as the at that time the section director mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Pau Prado, um, mm -hmm. one of our younger uh, graduates, yes, uh, graduates who was into interventional cardiology, and he said, you know, why don't you guys look into the AMI program, an acute myocardial infarction clinical care program? Yeah. yeah that would you know, uh, make sure that these patients that come in with chest pain and a heart attack are appropriately taken care of uh, in terms of uh, the guidelines and, uh, and, and uh, track their uh, outcomes and make sure that they you know, have very good survival uh, in the hospital and when they go home and they're able to return to uh, mm. their normal lives and get a certification from the JCI. Uh, JCI was already giving certifications for clinical care programs, which are uh, programs within the institution, mm -hmm. not just you know the institution-wide uh, programs that they were accrediting, but a certifying that this program was one of the best, that it fulfilled their criteria in terms of being a very good program for taking care of a specific subset of patients. That's correct. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, uh, so we had that big manual, Pau and I were looking through it and we're scratching our heads. Wow, yeah, wow, we had to are make we sure. going to do this? Yes, yes. How are we going to do this? The measures were quite stringent. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, coming from Jim, there was no backing out. I said, no, well, this complication is not something I'm really welcoming, but you know, <laughs> why not? Why not? And so we built the program. You know, there's so many things about this program where, you know, you have to write the clinical pathways. You have to do the timing of, you know, what is acceptable timing between the patient coming in and having an ECG and having had the ECG recognition of the MI and getting a consent for a procedure mm -hmm. that would save him, such as an angioplasty or a mm. thrombolysis. Thrombolysis, yeah. You know, all of this. And, and this is to taking care into account. And we looked at this little... Uh, uh, fine print in the uh, manual for certification that said the patients with uh, not insured mm -hmm. with minimal capacity mm -hmm. to pay should also be taken care of yes, appropriately. Correct. Yes, yes. A and so that was a big hurdle. But the first hurdle was deciding to do it. That's right. And 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 we did it. My goodness! Within three years, we were certified. Yes. 2015, we we're certified. In 2018, recertified, and 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 now they're coming over after the institution-wide uh, accreditation next week. Yes, yes, to mm -hmm. do this. And this has been uh, such a big deal, you yes. know, uh, such a big deal in terms of. Uh, of an achievement for the Cardiovascular mm -hmm. Institute, not just, you know, the certification was, you know, a, a feather in our cap, but, but just to lead the country in the recognition and management of acute myocardial infarction, an emergency that, that has to be dealt with within a few minutes when the patient comes in and have a, a very um, organized response to this and a response team. So, uh, I'm glad to say that yeah. uh, the CVI has been the leader. Well, that, well, that's one good note, Gary, is that you know you you put on the uh, the challenge and people really work through the challenge and then they win, they achieve it. That's a success. And let's face it, when the more successes you have, the more that you get people together with you. And then after that, we you started working on the heart failure. Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. We we now have Heart Failure Institute, mm -hmm. our, the Heart Failure Program, which has uh, been going on for a couple of years now. And uh, we're starting to get some data back and uh, getting things into place. But uh, probably it will be ready in a few years. Yeah. Uh, but, well, you know, it, well, we know where we're headed. Yeah, once it once you get started in this acute MI program, uh, things get a little bit more ordinary. You That's know? correct. The, the, the challenges are a little bit more ordinary. Uh, the thing is basically a little bit of a snowball going down the mountain. The confidence is there. Right. The right. ability to... Then you, in between that is the, your electrophysiology. Right. where we have our graduates actually training abroad and coming back. Right, yes. and that's the next step is atrial fibrillation now. Mm -hmm. We're also a little bit on the forefront of this in terms of our cryoablation for okay. atrial fibrillation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're looking into these directions now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I from, from being a, an institute with 
little uh, silos of subspecialty. Mm. We, we see ourselves as, you know, uh, programs, yes. programs which bring together the subspecialties. You know, acute MI brings together the interventional subspecialty, the echo subspecialty, because uh, uh, patients will have their hearts looked into in terms of function, mm -hmm. rehab, yeah, uh, rehab is, is built in, well. cardiovascular surgery, and also um, cardiovascular nursing, mm, you know, yes. how... You know, yes, that's right, yes. Uh, we, we didn't talk about this, but uh, yeah, big it, deal. It is something that we really need to also lead there. Yeah. Cardiovascular nursing. It's yes. a big deal because we have our own, uh, since uh, the uh, last few years, we've had our own cardiovascular floor yeah. with the telemetry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, this is where we uh, things get together in terms of patients, our trainees, the consultants, and our cardiovascular yes, nursing. Uh, uh, so with the cardiovascular patient at the center. I, I think that's the one that gets us together. You know, it's it's not about the silos that you talk, it's about the patient that we take care of. Right, It's a right. multi-specialty. And then the programs kind of cement this, you know, and when you have some specialties coming in as a, uh, and and uh, doing, uh, treating as a team, mm -hmm. rather than, you know, uh, you know, in, in, I, in the past, it used to be where, you know, you call in this subspecialty, they come in, they write their notes, That's and right. they leave. Okay. That's right, yes. So it's, no, it's not, 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 not like it, that it anymore. It can't be that way, yes. no. Yeah. It can't be that way anymore. That's been the medical city thing where, you know, uh, medical meetings have to be done, and, mm -hmm. and people weigh in with the patients and yeah. the uh, family. Yes, so. and they love it. They love the family, actually love it. Now, uh, moving on, Gary, uh, how do you see the Cardiovascular Institute moving on, moving ahead uh, in the next five years? Yeah, well, uh, uh, medicine and cardiology in particular is a fast moving field. Mm -hmm. So um, as, we, as we try to distinguish ourselves nationally, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, we need to continue to develop the expertise mm -hmm. in, in many of the leading edges of mm -hmm. cardiology, mm -hmm. uh, such as structural heart mm -hmm. disease, yeah. uh, uh, where, uh, you know, uh, intervention is not limited to just opening up the coronaries, but also dealing with the valves, yes. such as uh, trans-aortic yeah. uh, valve replacement. Yes, we've been doing that. Huh? We've been yes. doing that, uh, and we hope to uh, develop our own expertise uh, in the next few years in the okay. field. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, also with, uh, as you mentioned, with electrophysiology mm -hmm. and, and uh, ablation mm -hmm. procedures. Um, but also tied together with programs that, that bring people together. Mm -hmm. So so yes, we're already on the heart failure uh, uh, program. And then uh, in the next couple of years, we will be concentrating on an atrial fibrillation mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. So the expertise has to be built. But, uh, and uh, the, the, the teamwork, uh, and, and we know it becomes a little bit more fragile sometimes when you build a bigger and bigger team. And we are a big team. That's a challenge. We are a big yes. team and that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. and, and because so, the, the, the thing, the challenge there, uh, Gary, is the fact that, let's face it, the Cardiovascular Institute of the Medical City has become so successful. People are drawn to it. And a lot of times, of course, you did mention that we don't want inbreeding. We, we get people from outside. Now, these people from outside bring with them their own uh, style and their own histories. And there might actually be a change in culture as well. And this is the challenge that we have because the more successes we have, the more we draw in people and the more that there is a need to uh, really make sure that we preserve or improve on the culture that we have, which is the teamwork that we- Right, right, right. Teamwork and, 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 uh, and cohesiveness. But the other thing that I, I guess we need to build up on is, is the one TMC concept mm -hmm. where, you know, yes. uh, the enterprise. Which, the enterprise mm -hmm. where, where we have, what, five hospitals? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we need to uh, uh, basically integrate uh, the uh, expertise in, in these hospitals and uh, function more or less as a hub to mm -hmm. these hospitals yeah. where patients can uh, 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 be, be transferred and, and, and uh, be uh, treated at the main, but also have a little bit of uh, um, the interaction between the uh, physicians in, in the main hospital with the different hospitals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be able to have uh, physicians from our, our hub or our, our um, uh, five hospitals be able to practice in, in the yeah. main hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, one of the uh, uh, things that, uh, that the enterprise is looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's really trying to 
continually get better in what we do yeah, yeah. while preserving that uh, culture of uh, yeah, that's uh, right. family. The family, I'm very, very particular about that. Yeah. Something that we can really be very proud of. Uh, you, you did not mention uh, cardiac transplantation. And I think uh, just to complete, uh, when we talk about, is there a future of cardiac transplantation uh, down, the, down the line and down the, uh, the we, years? We, uh, that's right. Uh, the, the heart failure program has a component called the Advanced Heart Failure Program. Mm -hmm. And we started this when one of our graduates, uh, Dr. Advin Kula. Trained uh, in Canada. Was yeah, in Canada. Uh, yes, so. yes uh, trained in Canada for advanced heart failure. And she was exposed to uh, the... Um, LVAD programs, mm -hmm. the uh, left ventricular assist devices, which uh, are, uh, you know, uh, implanted in people with uh, really advanced failing hearts and is a bridge to transplantation. Mm -hmm. And and yes, we have been exploring this uh, particular uh, part of heart failure in the last couple of years, uh, looking into the LVAD program and also uh, uh, initially uh, looking into the uh, beginning of a heart transplant program. I think we're still a few years mm. uh, from there, yes. but mm -hmm. uh, that's the an important uh, part of our heart failure program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it well, is something because when we you can, talk about heart failure, you're not just talking about the technique or the uh, the capacity to do that, cap capability to do that, but also the entire national, you know, the, in terms of the program, the national program, where you know somebody has to. The, tra the, uh, the donation program and all these other things. So yeah. it's, it, it becomes complicated. Yeah. It does, it does. Mm -hmm. But we, we already uh, um, started a registry of our mm -hmm. heart failure program mm -hmm. that was started by the, also by the Philippine Heart Association. But you know, when the leadership changes every year, it's the yeah. PHA and the, yeah. uh, the ideas and the, the concepts get lost, but, but uh -huh. we're continuing that. We're uh, starting a registry of our heart failure programs, looking into what patients are suffering from, what's causing their heart failure, and what's uh, improving their outcomes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we, this is one of our uh, main uh, programs that we're looking at. And, and uh, we, we already have uh, outcome measures okay. that we'll be reporting in the JCI. So um, it, these, are, these are things that, that uh, I think that have to uh, be emphasized, you know, keeping these registries and keeping track of our patients. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, hello, you know, this is your That's discharge. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, we look after them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have a program that calls, we, we call them up mm -hmm. and uh, in, in one month, in three months, ask how they're doing. Are they seeing their doctor? Did they do their tests? Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, when, when you join Medical City, particularly when you join the Cardiovascular Institute as a patient, we look after you when when you're discharged. It's not a, you know you're you're well. Take this and see us in a few months. Yeah. Especially now that we are going into the TMC anytime, anywhere, you know, and going to the uh, enterprise wide. Yeah. So, so there you have it, and uh, definitely there will be more challenges because the challenge is not just the uh, the technology part or the, but it's also about running the entire gamut of uh, cardiovascular disease uh, in the country, you know, and. Um, so there you have it, uh, Gary. I think I think you have. Uh, we can stop here. <laughs> we talk about there has only been there have only been three leaders. Have you identified the fourth leader? Yes, I have. You yes, have. Yes. You haven't told me that. Oh, we will talk about it. <laughs> <Okay>. Yes, uh, <laughs> there are many because, things. Because uh, there's many things we need to talk because, about. Uh, <laughs> just uh, as a way of ending, uh, Gary, myself, and Doctor Ramboyong, uh, we we get together and we travel uh, abroad, no, uh, to places that uh, ordinary tour tourists would not want to go. And uh, we have with us our cameras, and we we have time for coffee. And uh, this is the the nice part: the friendship that we have developed over the years. And we talk about what is the future of medical practice and what is the future of cardiology. And I think that's where we are looking forward to uh, when we can actually just you know, uh, sit back and uh, talk about looking back what we have achieved together and how much more we can facilitate the transition, uh, uh, making sure that Medical City uh, Cardiovascular Institute is going to be led uh, not according to our one, but you know, w what is appropriate. So with that, I think uh, there is no doubt that the future of uh, the Cardiovascular Institute of the Medical City and the future of the Medical City itself uh, with people like this, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we can guarantee that uh, we know exactly where we're headed and that we are very happy to uh, 
And we're very proud that we have people like Dr. Gary Martinez, who has the, not only the, uh, the leadership, but also the understanding of uh, the human uh, interactions no? and all these other things. So with that, I would like to say thank you, uh, Dr. Gary Martinez. You have done a, a, a swell job uh, leading the Cardiovascular Institute of the Medical City. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay.